Hey gamers, have you ever tried lining up that perfect headshot in your favorite first person shooter, but the crosshair just won't respond how you want it to? It might be due to a little thing called joystick dead zone. So what is a dead zone? Simply put, it's an area where if you move your joystick, the movement won't be registered. This helps prevent minor unintentional movements that could cause jittering or joystick drift. Joystick drift is when a slight offset from the starting position is registered, causing your player to move by themselves or your camera to spin on its own. While dead zones can be beneficial, some third-party controllers have large built-in dead zones that make precision gameplay nearly impossible, and not all dead zones are created equal. There are two main types that might be affecting you without you even realizing it. There are radial dead zones and axial dead zones. Let's start with radial dead zones. This is a circular zone around the joystick starting position. The input is registered only when the joystick moves outside of the circle. Now on to the more complex axial dead zones. Imagine a graph overlaid on top of the joystick. The x-axis runs left to right, and the y-axis runs up and down, each ranging from negative 1 to 1. When the joystick moves, x and y values are sent to the console. An axial dead zone typically applies to each axis separately. If we apply an axial dead zone to the x-axis, the zone runs across the entire section of the graph. This type of dead zone is usually applied to both axes, creating a cross-shaped zone. These examples show how dead zones can negatively impact your gameplay. The real issue is that some controllers have these dead zones permanently built in with no way to adjust them. In a perfect world, controllers would be manufactured without dead zones. But we live in the real world with tolerances, imperfect manufacturing processes, and low quality components. While a small dead zone can be acceptable, having roughly 20 degrees of dead zone on each axis can create significant issues. It's easy to see how this frustrates players, but it also affects game developers. If a developer wants to create an experience that requires accurate and precise controls, large built-in dead zones can ruin the experience. This might lead players to think the game is poorly designed, resulting in negative reviews and a damaged reputation for the developer. Luckily, most name brand controllers don't have this issue unless there's a manufacturing defect. But if you're using an off-brand controller, it might be worth checking for built-in dead zones. To do this, connect your controller to a computer. There's a handy online tool called Gamepad Tester, which is free at the time of this video. Once your controller is connected, move the joysticks and watch the values on the tool. Here's my cheap Logitech controller. You can see I can move about 20 degrees on each axis without any values being registered. Here's the bad news. Unless your controller came with software to modify its internal dead zones, the only solution is to replace it with better controllers. No amount of programming can fix controllers built in dead zone. I know it's a bit of a bombshell, but at least now you're aware of the potential issue. Before you lash out at developers, test your controller first. This might lead you to direct your feedback to the controller manufacturer, pushing for higher quality controllers. So with that out of the way, I want to thank you for watching and remember, sometimes all you need is a quality controller to make the difference. Stay safe, take care, and happy gaming.